Good morning. Fourth Sunday in Advent on the verge of celebrating the birth of God. Just a wonderful note we were sent to our website, church website. You know how people sent Christmas cards out to those who are homebound and got an email from Starla Bremel, who is Pastor Gib Mueller's daughter. Said, thank you so much for all the Christmas cards you sent, Dad. He sends his love and prayers to each of you. Dad is in a wheelchair full time now. He, he is in memory care and has his good and bad days, but loves to sing hymns and pray. So just to note, you can still send your Christmas cards to those who are homebound. Today, the main focus, even though we have a lot of readings and singing, is on the angel Gabriel announcing to the Virgin Mary of this mysterious and marvelous conception. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, merciful Father, I,
Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come and help us by your might, that the sins which weigh us down may be quickly lifted by your grace and mercy. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. is from Genesis the third chapter and they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden but the Lord God called to the man and said to him where are you and he said I heard the sound of you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I was and I hid myself he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman who you gave to be with me, she gave me the fruit of the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. This is the word of the Lord.
The second reading is from Genesis, the 22nd chapter. And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this, and have not withheld and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you, and I will surely multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of his enemies, and in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. This is the word of the Lord. It's from Isaiah, the ninth chapter. The people who walked in darkness have seen great light. Those who dwell in the land of darkness, on them has light shone. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spool. For the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as the day of Midian. For every boot of tramping warrior in battle tumult and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increasing of his government and the peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the word of the Lord. fourth reading comes from Micah, the fifth chapter. 
But you, O Bethlehem, Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has given birth, then the rest of his brothers shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall dwell secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth. And he shall be their peace when the Assyrian comes into our land and treads in our palaces. Then we will rise against him seven shepherds and eight princes of men. This is the word of the Lord. from Luke, the first chapter. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying, and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of Most High. And the Lord God will give, him, give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom, there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. This is the word of the Lord.
The sixth reading is from the Gospel of St. Luke, the second chapter. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. This is the word of the Lord. The seventh reading is from Luke 2, 8, 16. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy. That will be for all the people. For a, to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you, and you will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was an angel, a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angel went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. This is the word of the Lord.
invite you to stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Here again, the good news shared from God through Gabriel to Mary. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying, and tried to discern what kind of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her who is called barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. This is the gospel of the Lord. We confess the creed. I believe in God. Let's do a book report on God's book. You may be seated. I would assume that most of you have done book reports one time or another. Junior high or high school or college. Do you realize what's happened today and throughout your life likely, your life revolves around a holy book, the Bible. We don't worship the Bible, but we worship the one that the Bible proclaims. Every religion has their holy books, Islam has the Quran, Judaism has the Old Testament only, plus the Talmud. Buddhism has the Tipitaka, Mormonism has the Bible, their rewritten version, plus the Book of Mormon, and so on. Christianity has 66 books, but really one book. And there's a huge difference between Christianity and all those other religions mentioned. Although all religions claim an exclusivity 
a particularity of their religion. But here's the difference. Christianity proclaims from the beginning of the Bible to the end that it's God himself alone that has to rescue sinners because people are completely incapacitated. So he has to do it. People are done to. Just like a person lying on an operating table under anesthesiology, they have no clue what's going on. And the surgeon operates. And actually that analogy is not quite accurate because biblically it says the person, all people, are not just under anesthesiology, anesthesia. They're actually dead, spiritually dead, but physically alive. And so the Bible says that God causes life to rise from death. The blind see. That's quite something. God creates out of nothing. That's the God of the Bible. And that's how we approach this most sacred text today. Luke 1, we read it twice for emphasis. The annunciation, the announcement by God through his sent angel Gabriel of his son's arrival in the virgin's womb. So let's take a fresh look. Let's do a book report. Some say, and it's argued quite often, that God's book is too hard to understand. But when you read our Lutheran forefathers who fought for the truth in the 1500s and the 1600s and onward, our Lutheran forefathers disagree. In fact, they write that the Bible owns this property, and the, it's the fancy word, perspicuity. A simple word is clarity, or a lucidity, or let's put it this way, I'll use analogy. Those who wear glasses, they come into church with their masks on, and what happens when they come in and the hot air hits your glasses? It fogs up. <laughs> Our Lutheran forefathers say the Bible is not foggy, but has a clear lens. And here's the rationale. Since God wrote the book, it would be blasphemy to say that God can't write the book with clarity, with perspicuity, with no fog. It doesn't mean that everything is absolutely clear, but what he wants to get across, namely your salvation and how he do, has done it and doing it, is crystal clear. One writer says, he is the master of language and words. And again, the main reason why God wrote the Bible, and this is explained from first chapter to the last chapter, is to save you, to save sinners, to save his whole creation from sin, from death, and his own wrath. It would be ridiculous and why would you ever trust the character of God if his intent was writing a Bible unclear? An unclear or a wrongly interpreted Bible takes away certainty and joy and confidence. No, the fruit of a clear Bible, a clear sermon, by the angel is certainty and confidence and joy. Whether it's a pandemic or whatever, even the facing of your own death. 
Okay, so let's get to the text, pastor. (laughs) Well, I am six decades and a half old. You know how old that is? And I don't ever recall talking to an angel. It's not every day that God sends Gabriel. Although the book of Hebrews says this, all believers are to be hospitable to strangers, quote, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 1. And in the chapter before, in chapter 12, in the worship service, in the divine service, it says we are meeting angels all the time. Hebrews eleven twenty two. That in the divine service, we're in this heavenly realm while here. And angels are our companions. But we're, with our senses, not aware except by faith. So God sends angels, but most of the time they're undercover. So in Luke chapter 1, this angel's not undercover. God sends an angel, Gabriel, to Mary. He actually talks to Mary. Not every day, again, does God send Gabriel. In earlier in chapter 1, he sent Gabriel to Zechariah to announce that his wife Elizabeth would conceive and she was barren. And very, very likely, although the angel is unnamed, who's talking to the shepherds in Luke chapter 2, it's likely Gabriel again. And then all the heavens break open with an angelic choir. So, take note. God doesn't do this every day. And he's writing the book. This means the Annunciation by Gabriel to the Virgin Mary is a big deal for the book, for the, for the Holy Bible's author, God. And therefore, a big deal for you, for you who are worshiping online. It's a big deal. It's a big deal of the, what we call the incarnation. God jumping into the skin of humanity. Remember? Because people can't save themselves or protect themselves from God's just wrath toward sin. So Luke 1, this annunciation means that God promised back then way back when, and now he's doing it. And not every day does a virgin conceive like never. Mary says, how can this be since I've not known a man? In other words, this is how God set up creation and marriage. It takes a A man and a woman, a husband and a wife. God's creative design. But if Jesus had an earthly father, it means that he would be contaminated with original sin. No, it had to be a virgin. And God is his heavenly father. This son of God, this holy one, must remain Holy, even though later your sin was put upon him. So this one, 
who is conceived in the womb of the virgin is God. And his purpose is to save you. That leads me to the next part of the book report. Just some unscientific analysis. There's four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. That tells you something there, how important the life of Jesus is, that the Holy Spirit causes four books to be written in particular about his whole life. Even though Jesus' stuff is scattered all over the Bible. But I looked at the book of Matthew. 28 chapters. How many chapters deal with the arrival of Jesus, his birth, the birth narrative? 11% of the book. Mark has 16 chapters, one chapter to his birth, 0.6 tenths of a percent. Luke has 24 chapters, three chapters to this birth story, 13%. And the Gospel of John has 22 chapters, but only one chapter to the birth event. In other words, you usually look at a book to see what are the important topics in the book and how much material is dedicated to what the author thinks as it is, is important. So it's not insignificant that the birth of Jesus is important. But what about from Palm Sunday to Monday Thursday to Good Friday to the crucifixion to the resurrection on Sunday to his teaching in between the resurrection and then his ascension. The Gospel of Matthew has eight chapters out of 28. 29%. The Gospel of Mark has six chapters out of 16. 38%. Luke has 25% of its book on those days as opposed to 13%. And the Gospel of John has 11 chapters out of 22 chapters, 50% as opposed to four-tenths of a percent. On Palm Sunday, Monday, Thursday, the crucifixion, the resurrection, and the ascension. This conception, I mean, you have to conclude this. The birth, the conception of Jesus, and the birth is big for God. But there's a purpose. There's an intent for his birth. And that's his crucifixion and resurrection for you. To redeem you. To reclaim you. To save you. Wow. Wow. The divine author has purpose of why and how he wrote his book. Amen. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will keep your hearts and minds in your Savior. Amen.
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. In thanksgiving to God for the favor shown us in Christ and in his incarnation, for faith to believe that nothing is impossible with him, and that everything would be to us according to the word of the Most High, let us pray to the Lord. For our nation, its president, all legislators and judges, and those newly elected to serve, that God would preserve their lives and guide their actions for the good of our people, for peace among the nations of the earth, and that God would preserve us from pestilence and famine, war and bloodshed, sedition, rebellion, and every evil. Let us pray to the Lord. For all women with child and all mothers with infant children, that God would grant them increasing happiness in their blessings. For the lonely, the depressed, and the despairing. For the, for the sick, the anxious, and the dying. Especially Joel, Marty, John, Teresa, Lonnie, Sue, Vicki, Elaine, John and Becky, Todd, Jason, Lee, and Carol and others that we name in our hearts before you. And for those who mourn, for Jim and Virginia at the loss of a, chi- of a son, that they would take comfort in the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who receive Christ's holy and precious body and blood today, that they may eat and drink it in repentance and faith and in the unity of a true confession and for a love and desire for the blessed sacrament this Christmas let us pray to the Lord on this day Lord we also rejoice with those who rejoice and we celebrate with Ben and Marilyn Niedert uh, another uh, year of blessings that you have poured out upon them and their extended family. We pray that the love that you establish between them, that you would continue to strengthen it and preserve it in every joy and sorrow shared. Let us pray to the Lord. O Most High, we give you thanks for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the key of David and the scepter of the house of Israel. By his death, he has opened the kingdom of heaven and close the gates of hell for all who trust in him. By his resurrection, he has rescued the prisoners who sat in darkness and in the shadow of death. Grant that as we recall with thanksgiving his advent in the flesh, we may always confess him and remain watchful for his advent in glory on the last day. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, One God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our
Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. This cup is the New Testament in my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Let us pray. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. The Lord be with you. Thy spirit. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. be seated. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Lord's house, this festival season. One of the mountaintops of the church here, Advent, Christmas, Epiphany, and then you know you, you go down into the valley of Lent and Good Friday, and then the mountaintop of the Resurrection. Because we know that life isn't all party or celebration. Life has its ups and downs. What holds us is faith in Christ. Christmas Eve, there's no Advent church on Wednesday. On Thursday, Christmas Eve, 3, 5, and 7. 5 and 7 has the candles. 
You need to register online or call the church office. Uh, so you can do that. We'll have some overflow over here in the chapel and likely in the back. Uh, we'll have regular services, service times next weekend, Saturday night at 5, and church on Sunday. Uh, anything else for the Lord's people? There's Bible study right after this. It's a great treasure. Uh, the Lord's peace be with you.